space stocks skyrocketing as the space race heats up. We want to show you a couple of them. Let's check out Virgin Galactic, Virgin Orbit, and the Procure Space ETF with a great ticker symbol, as always, UFO. We've got Virgin Orbit holdings up 19%. The ETF for uh, Procure is up 1%. Uh, and you look at Virgin Galactic, of course, the space tourism vehicle company up seven and a quarter percent. One of the newest entrants to the space race you've probably never heard of, Sierra Nevada Corporation. I was honored last night to be on stage and interview founders Fadi and Aaron Osman at CES's VIP invitation only leaders in tech dinner last night. Drew more than dozens of members of Congress. And you've got to hear how this couple spent a billion of their own money to reach for a dream and beat the big guys. We were thinking ahead. We saw the technology changing, small satellites are gonna come in and, and uh, I mean, us relying on Russians for 10 years to take our astronauts to space station is, is, is crazy. It's, it's not right. So, and, and now we can launch and, and recover our own uh, country, but still capsules. I mean, these are 50-year-old technology. You know, capsules, uh, space planes are, are real, the future to be able to land in commercial runways, green fuel, uh, that's really the piece. So, uh, but we started small, we had three acquisitions. Uh, we bought uh, th three companies, put it all together, invest our own money, significant amount of money. And then recently we spin off our Sierra Space as an independent entity because it takes a lot of capital we put significant amount of money, uh, almost equal the amount of money we raised, uh, which is a billion and a half dollars uh, for a four and a half billion dollar valuation, market uh, valuation, as the largest global, you know, uh, uh, Series A funding. Tenacity is the name of our space plane, the first mission. You're being out. kind. It, they were so, vicious. The competitors were vicious. Very vicious. Very, uh, I mean, games that are, um, a lot of political games. Uh, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, politics, the finance, I, I, I tease people, uh, large companies have more lawyers and lobbies than we have our engineers combined. So, <laughs> so when you're going to, uh, working with government, you know, how are you going to succeed? So you really have to, innovation is very key. The dream chaser will ferry crews, and by the way, it is pilotless. It will ferry crews to yes. and from in the beginning, the ISS, the International Space Station. Yes. And then, and again, he glossed over it, but Fadi shouldn't, uh, the green fuel. This is not fossil fuel that this runs on. Tell me, Aaron, a little bit about when you're going to be able to do this with the Dream Chaser, and then we will get to something called the orbital reef. Okay, thank God for dreamers, but tell us quickly about uh, Certainly, that yeah. we'll and jump uh, the reef. We were up against Boeing, so it was in the SpaceX, it, SpaceX. It was not a fair game, so we started with the seed monies from NASA, so start building, and actually Fadi and I really believe that this was the right thing to do, so we start investing our own money. So. We invested $1.5 billion of our own money into that. So when NASA saw that, we were just really leaning forward that uh, they start coming forward also. So between NASA, we got a $3 billion contract from NASA to take Dream Chaser to International Space Station for cargo right now. And our goal is to take astronauts. So we are building the crew version right now with the new uh, uh, funding that we just received from investors. The orbital reef. You guys have to go if you haven't been across the street from Central Hall to see uh, Sierra Space and the orbital reef. It's a smaller scale one, but believe it or not, this is going to be for LEO low earth orbit and it'll be like you can't just depend on the iss yeah. mm -hmm. that's for governments and, and astronauts this is a mixed use business park that floats in lower orbit yeah. tell me large, how that works yeah, it's a huge business park and it's very modular expendable scalable brings a lot of partners a typical uh, business park you know you have investors then somebody develops somebody owns and leases, and anybody can come and get a place to research, manufacture, and you name it. So it's very, I think it's the future of space, especially when you go against, China is building their own space station, giving free access to a lot of people. Our space station is aging, mm -hmm. and it's end of its life. So we have to come up with this commercial approach. One of the things that NASA did very successful, I encourage our Defense Department to do the same, this public-private partnership was very key. Yes. The money that I talked about investing, 
you know, they took a chance. Everybody has a skin in the game. And that's a different model than, hey, I give you a contract and I'll pay you as you deliver. So you don't have to really take a lot of risks and investments. So that uh, concept, I think, with our partner, Blue Origin, is amazing. Uh, Jeff Bezos personally is dedicated. And we talked about uh, how... What is, what is Blue Origin going to do with Orbital Reef? The ultimate vision is millions of people living and working in space. So that's the big vision. And, and I mean, Jeff may be thinking about having Amazon in space, but, uh, but we, <laughs> yes. we are really, uh, uh, in terms of the technology, that they're building modules. We have multiple partners coming together. That's why this whole excitement about space economy and the investment going crazy, specs and everything else last few years, that's how we raised this money because people, it's a validation of the vision. I, I think it's going to happen. The question is when, is it five years, 10 years, 15 years? But it doesn't matter if you have the long-term vision. Let me be clear, Mr. Osman started as an intern at the company and then he and his wife Erin bought it. The Osmonds do concede that already the final frontier and anybody who goes after it could face danger. Russia, as you know, it's been in the news, exploded a satellite in space. Aaron and Fatih have top level security clearance with the U.S. government. And while they didn't want to give details, they bluntly said space is no longer a peaceful domain, but that the U.S. government and military is on it.